And please join me in welcoming the Director of Business Development and Strategy at NEC, Don Clark. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I, I asked Dan how many presentations uh, did he make this week with not only this conference, but uh, the uh, work day that we had the last three days. And he said, I, I can't count them all. So um, the excitement of SDN is, is tremendous and growing. Um, we're very excited to be a part of uh, this, or this particular uh, event, but um, also to be working with great partners like Meru, uh, to move forward uh, the industry and deliver real value to customers. Um, so the focus today on my presentation is really what NEC has done in the enterprise space in deploying real networks for customers delivering real value. Uh, for those who are not familiar with NEC, uh, we're a $38 billion company, um, about $8 billion both in carrier communications industry and $8 billion in IT platforms. So we have a lot of experience in how terribly the network and the IT organizations work together and how the systems work together. Uh, so we saw the work that uh, Nick McEwen and uh, the rest of the Stanford group was doing in SDN five years ago and actually uh, founded the Clean Slate Lab to help develop this activity so that we could further the industry to the same open standards model that we've seen um, grow so well in the IT industry. Uh, this has helped us become a leader in the SDN space. We were the first to market with the OpenFlow uh, SDN platform, Programmable Flow. Uh, we're now on version 5.1. Uh, so we've had over three years of experience in deploying real networks uh, with Programmable Flow. We we're also first to market with OpenFlow 1.0 conformance. And uh, I, I'm, I'm jealous of this big placard over here. We need to get uh, the same size of uh, open flow conformance placard in uh, our office as I see in the mayor office. Um, but it's allowed us to um, you know, broadly demonstrate interoperability. Uh, NEC has been involved in all the plug fests uh, for the industry to demonstrate how uh, this uh, network can be opened up. And I'll talk about some of the motivations why in just a minute. Uh, we're also um, very involved in the NFE space, and we see SDN and NFE working hand in hand. And uh, at the end of my talk, I'll talk a little bit about where we see that going. Um, but very excited uh, to be the first one to deliver Evolve Packet Core as a virtualized uh, NFE space. Uh, so, you know, our experience has been in deploying over 200 customers. Uh, Dan, thank you for the lead in there um, globally. Uh, and so we have a lot of experience, especially in the enterprise space. And I'll talk about some of the use cases we're seeing with customers. Uh, I will admit that I've stolen this slide, but um, I think it's really relevant here to talk about how we uh, visualize SDN going forward uh, relative to the, to the rest of the industry. Um, so we have this uh, traditional model of tight integration of components and uh, the innovation being limited to any vendor's particular uh, development cycle. So in a closed model, the innovation cycle can only be as fast as the slowest component of uh, the uh, stack. But with an open innovation model, we now can decouple the innovation cycles so that the control plane for the network, for example, can accelerate faster uh, to uh, deliver real results for customers. And we can begin to work with an ecosystem that delivers vendor solutions. So in the example of NEC and Meru working together, we can show how uh, best of breed can be delivered using this open innovation model. The networking space has been focused on delivering uh, value to customers. And we've done that by delivering features, functions on devices. Uh, we've dug ourselves a hole. Uh, by delivering all these capability, we've made each of these devices very complex, um, uh, and they have lots of interaction uh, that has to be managed across the devices. Um, this network complexity can lead to fragility and inflexibility uh, because 
once uh, those devices are put in place, we don't want to touch them uh, because we don't want to make any changes that disrupt or um, can uh, lead to uh, bad results. We think that a better approach uh, is to have a model that the devices can be centrally managed. And there are two sort of thought, schools of thought uh, in the industry on this. One school of thought is that you have um, an abstraction of the data plane and management plane on the device, uh, and then you run an operating system on that device that has the applications. Uh, this does allow for uh, management across devices, but does not give you a network and does not allow for the uh, manageability that we expect from all of our other IT applications. Uh, we think a better model is to centralize network control uh, in software and to be able to manage that control in network uh, using an open protocol. Uh, NEC has been uh, very heavily involved in uh, the development of open flow control uh, throughout the development, both uh, pre-standard and uh, post-standard, uh, really to make sure that we're broadly interoperable, not just with NEC devices, but with a broad spectrum of devices so that customers can be best of breed. So this allows for that centralized control model that customers can manage from their uh, individual uh, services, and then to be able to uh, interoperate with the existing infrastructure. Uh, on top of that, we think it's critical to have a network virtualization model. Uh, by virtualizing the underlying infrastructure on the server side, we suddenly were able to maximize the utilization of all the infrastructure without having to worry about the individual devices. So the device management becomes completely separated from uh, the network policy, the services that are running in the network. And so this network virtualization model is critical to be able to fully exploit the centralized control model. And from there, we can build applications that plug into uh, those virtualized networks that are run completely independent of the underlying devices. This gives us uh, the ability to manage these applications virtually, just like we do on the server side. NEC has deployed uh, globally in uh, a wide variety of industries, including uh, the medical industry and healthcare, uh, in transport, uh, and in uh, financial services. And what we see is uh, customers have seen a lot of benefit from uh, delivering SDN. Um, first, really foremost, uh, customers are driven by service agility. Um, and what they've seen is moving from a decentralized uh, configuration model to this centralized control model, they can literally move their uh, ticket time down from weeks and months to minutes. Uh, because they're managing from a GUI, from a centralized control, uh, no longer are they requiring the complex configurations, uh, VLAN management, uh, 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 subnet management across these devices. Uh, this is all done from a centralized control uh, and uh, totally isolated using this network virtualization capability. Second, they see improved network operations by allowing the changes to happen uh, you know, through a GUI and no longer requiring device configuration um, they reduce the amount of staff hours required to uh, provision ad moves and changes. Uh, to give you an example, uh, we have a, a hospital uh, customer that when a you know, EKG device would move from floor five to floor seven in the hospital, uh, that would be a service change. They would need to go actually make a, a change to the uh, network because the device had a fixed IP address. With the SDN model, because we have mobility and virtualization across the infrastructure, when that device comes on to the network, it gets exactly the right policy it's supposed to get. Uh, so there's no longer this intervention by staff uh, to deliver those services, and they can focus on more value-add services to the organization. And third is uh, a reduced total cost of ownership. Uh, this model of SDN is allowing for 
higher levels of availability with uh, what our commodity infrastructure equipment. Uh, and so we're seeing really improved uh, OPEX and CAPEX um, by uh, delivering SDN. Um, just an introduction to, um, you know, the way that we think about the uh, industry going forward is we're going to have an open data plane um, and those are going to be uh, open flow devices, um, you know, maybe they're protocol independent devices over time. Um, and then a best of breed network operating system um, underneath a virtual network. And the way that we've approached this is we've introduced three series of switches. Um, the 5200 series was the first open flow 1.0 conformant switches uh, in the industry. Um, and then uh, we also work closely with a broad set of partners for establishing interoperability. So we are very keen to see broad interoperability uh, in the industry so that we can deliver real services but uh, with maximum customer flexibility. Uh, we're also working uh, with uh, uh, Miru and uh, other partners um, to really define different service levels and different values. And um, I'll, I'll tease a slide that I have later on the deck that shows exactly uh, the kinds of ideas that can come from this kind of collaboration. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we've introduced the programmable flow uh, control network, um, which consists of a best-in-class operating system for networks. So a um, variety of different capabilities uh, we could go into at a different time. But to give you just one data point, um, with this control network, we're able to scale to 5 million endpoints uh, across network infrastructure. Uh, so this is really a, a best-in-class network operating system. And we're able to do that because we've decoupled from the uh, requirements of the uh, individual devices and um, built a software model that can deliver these services. Uh, we've also exposed the virtual tenant which is our network virtualization concept. Uh, and that can provide these kinds of policy isolation across the shared infrastructure. So multiple tenants can share the same infrastructure without having to worry about running into each other uh, in terms of policy. Uh, it also, um, we've also donated this model into open daylight. So uh, those that want to uh, experiment with open source and begin to work there, um, can use this network virtualization model. Um, those that are ready to deploy in production, um, we can go today with our uh, product. Um, so if we think about the enterprise campus use case, um, a lot of what we're doing today is integrating uh, with existing infrastructure uh, in a hybrid manner. Um, so um, one example is uh, departmental level isolation. And we see in this model a lot of infrastructure focused on maintaining isolation between departments. Um, and then we end up with stovepipes and a lot of underused assets within each of these departments. Using an SDN model and network virtualization, uh, we can redefine the uh, network campus core uh, into an SDN core and provide network virtualization to create that isolation model uh, that today we're using devices uh, to do. Um, this allows us to um, integrate the departments without having uh, to have a shared model for their policy. What this implies is a dramatic reduction in the number of devices that need to be deployed need to be managed in order to achieve uh, same or better services. Uh, so this was an example of a uh, deployment, we, uh, a design we did for a customer, uh, where by creating an appliance pool and using appliances as services, we can um, remove a lot of the configuration complexity associated with uh, departmental level deployments and be able to provide services uh, to those uh, different uh, organizations uh, rather than um, having to deploy devices. And so you can see dramatic reductions 
uh, in the number of firewalls, load balancers, and switches associated with uh, each of these deployments, uh, and maintaining a better level of isolation and policy segregation uh, than you would have uh, with traditional networks. Uh, in the enterprise data center side, um, there are a number of challenges that uh, data center is facing. Um, the infrastructure is in silos, so uh, for each application you might have a uh, firewall load balancer, uh, other devices associated with that application. Um, those could be highly underutilized, um, but there's um, no way to capture that value across the organization. Um, change required manual configuration. So lots of interaction, lots of expertise of uh, device level configuration. Uh, and no um, mobility across subnets. So we end up with uh, fault models that are uh, associated with uh, uh, individual uh, silos and across um, no per tenant network policy. Uh, and so you know, the, the industry has really been focused on the, the multi-tenant aspect but really, we think it's that overall perspective where we can have total IT and network optimization, that is, visibility across the network, service levels across the network that can be defined and deployed without respect to uh, any uh, particular device configuration, uh, virtualization model, uh, or um, physical device. And so, through this model, we can optimize network utilization uh, because we can treat the network as one big switch. Uh, we can have no device level configuration, all of it's done centrally in a controller. Uh, we have VM mobility, so we can uh, optimize uh, the entire stack. We can utilize servers better than we could otherwise. Um, and then each tenant can have its own policy. Um, it can have overlapping IP addresses, can have QoS policies um, across the shared infrastructure uh, that um, don't conflict. And um, in a deployment we did for a large transport customer, we saw sig significant value to them um, both on the operation side and on the capital side uh, in terms of unit space and power consumption, dramatic reductions in what they were facing if they had deployed a traditional network stack. Um, and because they had reduced the complexity of this network administration model, uh, they were able to uh, eliminate the outsourcing fees associated with this deployment um, and really improve the provisioning time. So it was a win-win all around except for maybe some of the consultants. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> So where we see this going, uh, and uh, you know, in talks with uh, Miros, is really um, further integration of new services, of new features, of uh, you know, a management model uh, that allows for applications to be integrated rather than having all these stovepipes and silos. Um, <coughs> so NEC has done deployments already uh, with. Uh, wireless integration to legacy networks using 802.1x uh, in um, the access layer um, and then um, having the SDN core virtualized like I described before. Uh, you can uh, visit our website to see the case study on that. Um, but what we see this going is an integrated model where SSID and um, the network virtualization VTN model uh, become a single model. Um, and the mapping can be done uh, through the control layer uh, for L2 or L3 services. And we can, like Dan described, be able to place policies on a flow basis uh, across that infrastructure. Uh, so uh, this gives you a single point of control for the network uh, and a set of APIs that allow you to manage that network and integrate it uh, with other applications and other orchestration as the organization um, evolves and changes. Uh, so you can see how uh, this is both a starting point and a vision uh, that it can allow more control of the enterprise organization's infrastructure, but allow at the same time um, a model that um, is, provides investment protection for the most important assets in the organization, that is uh, the policy uh, the services that are running on top of 
the infrastructure so that the infrastructure may change, but the overriding policy doesn't. And so uh, from the SDN side, we see this model of um, uh, network functions virtualization and then applications built on top of this infrastructure really driving, um, defining uh, the services that um, are critical to the enterprise. And then um, more recently introducing orchestration and management tools uh, that can manage across uh, these applications pr to provision end-to-end -end services, be it uh, Microsoft System Center, uh, OpenStack, or uh, other tools that are uh, coming from the market, uh, including NEC. Um, so that we have an optimized management model, um, all open, clean interfaces uh, that allow for greater interoperability, better investment protection, and really a, a better business value uh, to the enterprise. So uh, we welcome the opportunity to work with uh, partners in this ecosystem and uh, please uh, visit our website. Uh, we have um, a number of interesting case studies uh, in enterprise deployments, uh, uh, necam.com slash SDN. Uh, we also have um, uh, some excellent training materials um, and we will be rolling out um, city by city uh, hands-on training for those that are interested. Uh, so we're looking forward to engaging with um, Meru as uh, this new market evolves and also working with um, uh, customers that, uh, you know, really thinking hard about uh, their next uh, innovation cycle in uh, the networking space. So thank you very much. Answered them all, I guess. Hello, hey, um, uh, Director of Product Marketing, uh, Dennis Wong. Uh, thanks, uh, Don, for the presentation. So, um, you know, converged networking uh, is certainly a very exciting topic, certainly for within Maru, and and certainly we believe in the direction of where SDN is going. But you brought up an interesting point in one of your presentation slides, which is uh, when you deploy this, one of the use cases was a reduction in equipment. Now, if we're in the business of growing uh, our own businesses, how do you see the actual benefits, uh, really, of FCN in, in the reduction of equipment and so forth, really being good for the industry? Where, where do you see that? Yeah. Um, so I, I have a good friend um, um, from the Japanese market that sells mainframes. He loves selling mainframes. It's a big ticket, they never fail, it's great, right? Um, Long-term contracts, you're in there for life, right? Um, but uh, this new model of networking um, is going to allow the same kind of innovation and agility that the client-server uh, model gave us 20 years ago uh, by providing new uh, models for deployment uh, customers are going to have more agility, uh, better services, uh, better ability to deliver on their business needs. Um, and, you know, that the industry's got to step up to that challenge and be able to deliver these things and uh, reliability, availability, um, and the kinds of services that customers require. Uh, hi, this is Lakshmi Narayan. Uh, I have one question, right? You have around 200 uh, customer deployments already in SDN. What kind of challenges you are seeing, I mean, when you're going for the customer deployments, uh, being SDN in the early stages, right? Um, okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, we've been doing this for about three years. I think early, uh, in the early stages, it was really about uh, interoperability with the legacy systems um, and managing traffic uh, as they move from legacy systems on to the SDN systems. Um, the original model for uh, an OpenFlow network was that all broadcast goes to the controller. Um, so you need to have a model for managing how broadcast moves around the network. Uh, that's a real, that was an early scalability issue that we had to address. Um, from there, it's really about uh, interoperability um, within, um, you know, a broader set of, of devices, of, you know, ecosystem partners. and. 
um, you know, as uh, customers' requirements change, we're um, trying to address that one at a time. Yeah, I, maybe a plug for, uh, you know, the, the original OpenFlow 1.0 specification, um, you know, we found uh, some serious shortcomings. Um, and so uh, we developed our own uh, set of uh, OpenFlow extensions. Um, the OpenFlow 1.3 protocol gets a lot closer to um, the, the production ready uh, type solutions. And so, uh, you know, as we see that uh, filling out and uh, more and more support for uh, this, then uh, we see more broader interoperability, more uh, kinds of uh, applications that uh, can be delivered uh, across you know, a, a broader set of infrastructure. So in the early days, it was all NEC infrastructure, uh, but as uh, the market has matured, we're able to use more and more of an open model. So uh, there is a myth, I mean, in SDN world uh, where uh, the control panel is more out of your hardware, so it slows down your performance of your network. So because, I mean, it is not there in your hardware. But if you're having a 200 real-time deployments, how do you see the performance and other aspects of the SDN deployments? Okay. Yeah, so um, we've, we've been able to scale uh, quite large. Um, there's um, on our website, you can see a, a case study of a um, uh, NTT uh, data communications global deployment um, across 11 sites uh, in nine countries worldwide. Uh, SDN has allowed them to provide enterprise class services uh, with mobility. So uh, they have really a single infrastructure. Um, customers can manage their infrastructure globally from a single pane of glass uh, because of SDN. Um, so there really is no question that this technology is, is uh, global and uh, uh, at scale really for any level of deployment. Um, you know, we've um, together with Ixia benchmarked uh, that at scale we can set up, uh, that the control plane can set up flow entries in uh, the microsecond level. So um, there really is uh, no bottleneck on the control side uh, if you do it right. 